I use she, her pronouns. Um, and I'm the studio coordinator at the Design Thinking Initiative. So my job is to help uh, students like yourself learn how to use our equipment and um, just make things in general and make um, you know the, the act of making really accessible to all of you. And I'm also um, a Smith alumni. Hello, everyone. It's great to see you. Um, I am Emily. I have the dreamy job of directing the Design Thinking Initiative. Um, so I'm, that means that I work to integrate the ways that design and making can be um, viewed as ways of, of thinking and as enhancing the, the liberal arts experience at Smith. Um, so I get to work with Laura, who's awesome, and uh, I get to teach some of the courses that we offer through the Design Thinking Initiative. And I'll leave it at that, unless you want me to say more, Laura. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's it for now. But um, basically, what I'm planning on doing today is just showing you our physical space um, as, as best I can over Zoom, and then talk more about like, who we are and what we do, um, and have Emily talk about her uh, very, very cool class called IDP 316. Um, and then just talk about how you can actually like interact with us in this you know, weird uh, remote in-person hybrid we have going on. Um, all right, so I'm gonna start the tour by just uh, showing you different pieces of equipment and what they do. And the first thing I'm going to show to you is a laser cutter. And um, what a laser cutter does is it fires a beam of light at a point really precisely and really intensely. And that uh, point of light is intense enough that it can cut through um, materials really, really some examples of laser cut work. So this is a plastic that was cut out and glued together uh, called acrylic. And this is another example of laser cut acrylic. Um, but you can also do really delicate materials. So this is laser cut paper, which I just think is so cool that this machine, it can cut through these pretty hefty materials and also these really nice and delicate ones. Um, and then you can do 3D designs like this one. Um, and right now I'm working on making all of you little keychains. So if you go on one of the tours of campus this weekend, you can pick um, one of these up from us here. And here's a different example of a keychain. All right, so I switch my view around and show you how this thing actually works. Um, so this is the laser cutter. This is what it looks like. And I'm just turning it on. Um, and basically the way it's working is there's a laser in this side of the machine and it's sending light that's reflecting off of the series of mirrors in this side of the laser cutter. And through, bless you, one of these mirror, this mirror over here. Um, and then through a lens, like in this little uh, lens assembly, and uh, basically that lens is taking the laser light and kind of focusing it. Uh, so if you think of the way a lens works from like a science class, it's kind of focusing that light into like a, a cone, like a timer shape. And what I'm going to do now is like focus that shape so that the really precise point is at the surface of the material. Um, that I'm doing with these buttons and to get an idea. This is kind of measuring like where is that really precise uh, focus point. And then I am moving up the bed of the laser cutter uh, to meet that point. That's what's happening there. And that's it. The laser cutter is now like set up and ready to go. It is not, not that difficult a machine to learn how to do. And uh, this is the laser cutting computer and I have designed my file here. The laser cutter accepts um, a bunch of different file types as long as they're uh, two dimensional and they're like in uh, the computer world, so they're using what's called uh, vectors and raster designs. Um, and I'm just printing this file the way I would print 
like a document really. It's not too much more complicated than that. And I'm going to put in uh, settings like they were advanced printing settings. And this is where you customize um, based on what material you're printing on. So I'm laser cutting out of wood, but if this was paper, this these settings would look very different. So um, I already have these settings in, but basically what's going on here is I'm telling the laser cutter like how fast it's going to be moving and then um, what intensity the laser will be at. And then these are my um, engraving settings. And then for my cutting settings, there's this additional value of frequency. Um, so the frequency is uh, in pulses per second, which is just kind of a fun fact that the laser is actually pulsing 500 times per second. All right. And now I am pressing print. And by pressing print, I'm sending that information over to the laser cutter. And it has received it. That's why this, this thing is showing up. That's the name of my file. And then um, I'm going to turn on the filtration system. So it might get kind of loud in here. Uh, Zoom is usually pretty good about like filtering out background noise. Hopefully, hopefully that works for you. And then I'm just pressing go. And there it goes. So it's engraving right now. And let's see if I can move. Not really. I don't know how well you can tell, but like text is showing up here. Uh -oh. and it. And now it's switching to cutting. So this is it. And uh, with that, I have made a thing. So it's really pretty straightforward. Um, and this is a great uh, tool to kind of try out if you're looking to make something, but you're not really sure what to make. There's just endless things you can make with a laser cutter. Um, and if you do pick one of these up, you could um, engrave like your own name and your number back if you wanted to as a first project. All right, so zooming out a little, um, this is the room where like a lot of the making magic happens. So upstairs uh, prototyping studio and looking around, um, these are like hand tools and woodworking tools. There's actually another laser cutter over here. Um, there is a industrial sewing machine that can sew through some really heavy duty materials like leather. Um, there's a soldering station. Um, and there's a 3D printing station. Um, so I'm attempting to print something here. It's, it's kind of hard to see because it's covered in support structure, but it's like a really, really tiny house um, that will look something like that. And um, here's some more like 3D things uh, that students have printed. So you can 2D print like pretty um, kind of abstract designs. So this is a 3D scan. And you could also 3D print like engineered parts that fit together really well. So like this uh, nut and bolt is actually functional, which is just a very cool thing about 3D printing. Um, and this machine is working by 
heating up a spool of plastic filament, you can kind of see in the back. Um, and then it's extruding it to a nozzle that looks like this. So this part is heating up and that's melting the plastic. And then it's building up layer by layer by layer on the side. So that's kind of what's in this room. And now stepping outside to show you the rest of the building. Um, this is a tree full of, of like very first projects. So all of these leaves um, are people's first projects and you can also make a leaf and add it to the tree if you are looking for a first project. Um, and this is examples of vinyl cutting. So vinyl cutting is um, basically making stickers that are only one color and you have what's essentially an exacto knife on a coordinate system that is uh, drawing out, cutting out your design, and then you peel off the negative space. Uh, so there's two million that you can do that. And actually, across the hall up here, this is normally Emily's office. It's like decorated with so many cool design thinking things but it's going to turn into a sewing room. And um, we have like a, just a normal sewing machine in here. We also have this super fancy embroidery and digital sewing machine that is very cool. Um, it can make things like this. So you uh, make a file with text or with a drawing with some kind of design. And then um, the embroidery machine interprets that and is actually able to embroider the the design for you without you needing to do all the really intricate embroidery to make this happen. Um, and then also we just have like lots of fabric down here and um, hand sewing tools as well. This is our classroom space and it's going to be turned into a kind of multimedia crafting area over in this section um, and a vinyl cutting area over here. And then this is our second entranceway. Um, but this, this area right outside is going to be where you would come for a curbside pickup. So I'll talk a little bit um, in, our, in our last few minutes about how you might like reserve crafting supplies and just pick them up right outside the door, but that's where you would go for that. Um, and then this little room is going to be dedicated to another laser cutting machine called the Glowforge. And the Glowforge is special because it can take uh, designs that you've drawn and scan them and then cut them out. So it is really great at these organic shapes that are kind of hard to manage um, with a traditional design software. And there is, open this up, you can see there's actually a camera and that's what's scanning your design. Um, and then you are uploading it to the software and editing it. Thank you, Laura, um, for the very awesome tour. And I love the embroidered patch you made. I know that was your first foray into embroidery. So cool. Um, so I will share a little bit about the, the courses that we offer through Design Thinking. Um, the, the first already happened in J-Term and is an intro to Design Thinking. It's uh, Historically, it was like a one week intensive. This J term, we got to experiment with it being two weeks long. Um, and it is a like, it's intensive. It's a deep dive into um, taking on a, a challenge with a team and using design methods to, uh, to think of solutions or interventions that might address that challenge. Um, and then IDP 316, which is called Critical Design Thinking, is a semester long four credit um, studio course. So that meets twice a week for about three hours um, each class. And the, it is a, a deeper, more in-depth, uh, broader version of 116 in that uh, students, We'll start by getting kind of a, a, a grounding and a foundation in some critical theory around design and design thinking and how that field has emerged and is 
shifting as we um, as we work, and then uh, we'll work together in teams again um, to uh, along with project partners on campus bound or, or community centered uh, design challenges. So um, again, that's a chance to practice. What does it mean to uh, make change in our, in our community using um, design methodologies? And uh, I, yeah, the other class that we, um, that I teach is, uh, I teach one of the sections of designing your path, which is, um, a little bit different and there are many sections being offered this spring as well as next fall, each semester actually. Uh, and that's a chance to apply design methods and mindsets and strategies to thinking about your own path through Smith or in your life. So it's uh, called designing your path because it's a chance to reflect on and, and contextualize where, where you're at, um, how you got here and where you might want to explore going either through the open curriculum at Smith or beyond. So um, keep an eye out for all those courses and come, come play. We have a really great website and there's lots and lots of information on it. So I would definitely recommend uh, coming here and checking it out. If you want to learn more about like us and our philosophy, um, you want to go to this about tab. Um, if you want to learn about like how to access our studio and what our hours will be and what our policies are on access, you want to go here. Um, upcoming events. Uh, this is about our classes and this is a gallery of student work. Um, and then just some spotlights on a few of these things. Um, this page isn't live, but it will be very soon. And this is how to use our space if you are in person on campus. So once this page is live in about a week, you can come here um, and see, you know, when our students like allowed to come use the space, right? It's doing green mode. Um, what happens when we change to yellow, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then, so when we're in green mode, um, what you can do is you can take our safety training, um, which is going to be fully online. So we'll be watching two videos and then answering some questions on the video. Um, and then once you've done that, you'll basically submit a form. I'll see that you've done safety training and uh, you'll be ready to come use our equipment. And um, when you do that, you would go to this make an appointment tab, which will take you to our scheduling page that has a lot of stuff on it, but um, you would go down to these on campus appointment slots and select the um, equipment or tool that you want to be using. And then, yeah, we're not open yet, so there's no times in February, um, but there are times in March. Um, and then you just want to find a time right that works with your schedule and you just sign up. Um, and then you would just agree that yes, you have already done the safety training, we don't need to worry about that, um, and then schedule it. So it's, it should be really very like straightforward to use iSpace once you've done that safety training. And then if you're remote, um, you would actually just go to our main studio and hours homepage here, um, and then scroll down to remote access and um, basically, this is just going to tell you to make a time to meet with me and um, talk through your projects so that you're at the point where you're really ready to just fabricate something and you have a digital file that's ready to go. So you make a time to meet with me. We talk about how to do that. You would make your file and get it all set up and then um, add it to a Google form and then schedule another time for me to be in the studio and you to be at home. Um, and then you would be on Zoom with me, kind of directing me um, to, you know, what size you want your object, what color should it be, what material, all of that kind of thing. And then I will mail you your object if you're off campus, um, which is very cool that we're able to do that. And then if you're on campus or you're local, you could pick it up via curbside pickup. So this is also a great option if um, you don't know how to use a piece of equipment and you're not feeling ready to like learn it from scratch all by yourself, 
you can also do remote access to gain an understanding of the tool you want to use and then switch to in-person uh, studio use. Then also you can check out crafting supplies. So this is our tools and material library. And there's just like lots of good stuff on here. So uh, first you just sign up for an account. And then once you've done that, uh, you can sign things out. And if you sort by this middle button, that will like give you only making and crafting supplies. So there's also some design books on here and um, Arduino kits. And then you just place a hold and that sends an email to me and I'll put uh, your kit outside for curbside pickup also. Um, and I can also mail you things if you are remote. 